Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and now we're going to have a look at my solve of today's super fiendish Sudoku in the Times and um, here we are and first of all as so often I'm just beginning by putting in the uh, some of the characters, that, some of the uh, pencil marks for where in a box I know a number has to be so by that I mean that these threes in this top box must be in one of those two cells. Well, the three in the top box, in the top right box, must be in one of those two cells because that one is constrained by that three, and this one is constrained by that three. That then helps identify where the three is going to be in this column. It obviously isn't in this box, which already has a three, and it's not in this box, which has the three there somewhere. So it must be in one of those two cells. So that's how you get started. The ones actually provided me with a bit of a way in here because one of the ones knocked out one of those three possibilities. The only place a one could be in that box was here, given the ones given across and down. And in fact, I then found that there was a one that had to be here, given the ones in this across and down as well. So um, it was reasonably straightforward that the two ones across the middle prevent it being in any of those three boxes, and that box is ruled out by the one below. So it was a fairly straightforward start to the super fiendish, in the sense that these candidates that I've put in are really helping eliminate things to some extent. I've got all the threes apart from two of them, which will be shared amongst those four boxes fairly quickly. Um, and I think the twos I was largely done with, apart from two pairs as well, there and there. So I've got quite a few numbers placed. And in a super fiendish, you always think that's quite an advantage. Um, that one was what we call a naked single, where that cell suddenly only has one possible candidate from all the others. So considering that cell that I'm circling here, it can't be a 2, 3, 5, 1, 9, or 8 from the ones above or below it. And it couldn't be um, 7 and 6 from the ones to the right of it. So it had to be a 4. And as I say, with a super fiendish puzzle, you know, its billing is sometimes a bit misleading and you can really make some progress. But any confidence I was feeling um, came back to bite me in this one because as we neared the end of the puzzle, by which I mean well over, well probably over half the cells were filled, but then I suddenly found that I got stuck and it took me a really long time to see what to do. And now this is one of the problems I find with um, entering puzzles on a solving, a solving application like this. Um, what I would do in a paper situation, like at the Times Sudoku competition or the um, UK Puzzles Association Sudoku competitions, or indeed the World Sudoku Championship, you're solving on paper, and it's pretty straightforward to change to pencil or a different colour, try one possibility out, um, be prepared to rub it out, and... Um, correct it as soon as it goes wrong and that's often a much quicker way. Now some Sudoku solvers don't like that method at all. They want to see their way through entirely logically and indeed certainly when you're doing an instructional video and at any time when you're solving online where you can only fill in some pencil marks. Like there is no way that I could suddenly use this application to fill in if this was a Ford then um, then these two boxes would have to be a one and a nine because that would clash with the, the marks that I am putting in that I'm certain about. Now, what the secret was here in the end, I think from what I remember, I mean, I kept looking at rows like this 932187, thinking that's got to be giving me something. But in the end, um, now, there were a few obvious ones that I missed, and I worked out what they were. This 2135 in a group of 2x2 two two cells is quite powerful, because it means that this 9 here constrains the 9 in this box to be in one of those two cells, because it can't be in those top three, so it must be in one of those two, and that fixed the 7 and 9 down here. Now, that 7 
was a lot more helpful than I'd realised. Um, there has to be a 7 up here in those two because of that 7. There has to be a 7 in one of those two. So actually at this stage I'm still going along okay. But I seem to remember that it was the 7s that... Uh, I, had, I don't always go back and correct wrong possibilities because I kind of don't really notice them anymore. As, as you remember, I'm not only entering the possible candidates in a cell. I'm entering where a number has to be within its box rather than its cell. So that's not kind of throwing me because a one is impossible there. Um, but as I say, what where I eventually realised that something was going on, I'm trying to remember actually, and uh, struggling a bit. I think eight, yes, this is it. Because of these two eights in the bottom rows, and it takes me ages to spot this. The eights have to be in the same cells where the three has to be in this bottom middle box. Because they can't be in the two bottom rows, and they can't be in that cell down. So that box and that box are three and eight in some order. And because of that, that means that this cell can't be a seven, Neither the 3 and 8 cells can be a 7. This cell can't be a 7 because of this one. The 7 is in one of the two bottom ones here. And once I see that, I can get going again because with the 7 there, that rules out this box for a 7. These two are ruled out by the 7 directly above them. That becomes a 7, and that finally gets me going again. Then we can put a 6 up here. That resolves which of these two 6s I've just noticed in this box could appear as that one, and finally the puzzle can be solved. But it really took me a long time to uh, see anything. You know, even now I'm still kind of faffing around and wondering if I'm going to get something out of having noticed in this top box that there's sevens there, sixes there, and nines there, but that doesn't really help. And the main reason that doesn't help is fours aren't constrained in this box at all. They could be in any one of the five cells at the moment. So. Oh no, look, there's a four there. So, well, they could be in those three. And there's just not enough restrictions there to go. Because Sudoku is a logic problem of elimination, you really need to find places in the grid where a lot of elimination has happened. And that's why one keeps circling back to rows and columns which have seven of the nine boxes filled, like this one. It's clearly a potentially very helpful column, but until I notice that this has to be the 7. Ah, now I've spotted the 8s and 3s. Now I'm putting the 7s in the bottom box there. Now I know that can't be a 7. That must be a 7. And I've put the 7 in there and thinking that will help me, but in fact that hasn't helped me. But getting that 6, now we've finally got some progress. And I think, I felt at this point that I'm nearly done, but still there was a bit of finishing off to do. Um, this column's come out fairly straightforwardly. The fours, there are so many fours, so few fours in the grid at this stage, that's not all that helpful. But finally now I'm managing to fill in the top box. Now I do get another four, and that one is helpful because that'll put a four here when I notice that. Um, and now it's just a case of finishing off the grid. But at the end, I think my time, therefore, was about nine minutes. And as I say, I would have crack that in maybe half the time if I'd been allowed to kind of use this method that I call bifurcation, uh, where you make a choice out of one of two possible choices, and if it turns out to be wrong, you go back and you know you have to make the other choice. Um, Simon and many others call that guessing and uh, deride it, but it can be a very useful technique. So there we go. That's finishing off um, today's Super Fiendish. It was super fiendish, I think, for me. It took nine minutes. That's quite an annoying time. A puzzle doesn't normally, no classic Sudoku would normally take me that long. Again, that's partly because of the software, but partly because I was just being blind to the eights in the bottom section and what they could do for me. Um, thanks for joining us on Cracking the Cryptic. Hope you enjoyed that little excursion into a super fiendish Sudoku. See you next time.